Willie. Where did you ever get a collar like this? Well, the salesman told me they were worn with a cutaway. And you look so handsome in a cutaway. They used to be worn with a cutaway when I was much younger. And that silk hat. Ever since you had it clean, has been too small. Oh, but you look so distinguished, even if you just hold it. <laughs> well, James, you hurry and get dressed. I'll answer the door. I guess it's Millie. Happy New Year, Mrs. Hardy. Sign here, please. Same to you, Jimmy. Thank you. Oh, dear. James, it's a telegram. It must be bad news. Who's it from? What's it say? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Well, reading it's about the only way you'll ever find out. James, do something. There must be some law against it. Yeah. Let me see what he says. No, it isn't from him. It's from Marion. Are you sure she said married? After all, I can read English, even if I was born in Canada. Emily, what makes you think Andrew is married? James Hardy, you can't get separated until after you've been married. Emily, I'm going to reveal some military information to you. In the other war, when a man left the army, he was discharged. In the recent one, a soldier gets separated from the service. You see? Well, I don't see why the army can't come right out and tell a boy's own mother. Hello there. Well, this is a new outfit. Does it look too giddy? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Are you laughing at me? Oh, no, Billy, no. Billy, read the best piece of news that's happened to the Hardy family in two years. <laughs> James, the hat. Emily, this... I have no control over this hat. It's too small. Now, James. Step back, Judge, on the curb. Son, I... Me too. Me too, dear. Wonderful to have you home. How did you get here? Uh, yes, ATC, C-54, and bingo, here I am. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, you, you look pretty enough to eat. Uh, <laughs> Say now. Andrew, stop that. I'm your old mate, Art. <laughs> Excuse me, Judge. Uh, will you look at this? I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Andrew just came home. <laughs> Gosh, Mom, I can't believe that I'm back. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to have you home again, Andrew. Andrew. Oh, excuse me. Say, Mom, did you get any messages for me? Uh... Telegram, maybe? Not that I know of. Why, are we expecting something special? Oh, not 
especially special. Something from college. Oh, college. Did you notify them that you're home and out of the service? Well, after I arrived, I wired you. I sort of set a wire. <laughs> Marion, you mean my sister. Oh, she, she's fine. Andrew. You don't have to go to church if you don't want to. Mother understands. Oh, oh but I do want to go to church. If you're going to have all that trouble with your head, why did you wear it? Happy New Year, happy George. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mr. Benedict. And a happy New Year to you. Oh, may I present Senorita Isabel Gonzalez? Isabel, these three <laughs> nice people are... As if I didn't know. This is Andy Hardy's father, the judge. And this must be Mother Hardy. <laughs> and Aunt Millie, of course. And my daughter Polly wrote Isabel that there was no point in visiting Carvel with Andrew in the service. He just got out. <laughs> Andrew's home? Yes, yes. Miss Gonzalez, I'd like you to meet... James with Andrew. We've lost Andrew. Oh, Emily, Andrew found his way home across an ocean in a large part of a continent. I don't think he's gone forever. That wouldn't be Andrew Hardy over there. Andrew. Andrew! How does it feel to be the father of Andrew Hardy? Well, that's a privilege I try to bear, modestly. <sighs> Excuse me, folks. I guess I must have been thinking about something else. Welcome home, Andrew. We really missed you. Thank you, sir. How did you like the Army? Well, Mr. Benedict, I come from a long line of civilians, and I'm happy to be back with them. <laughs> uh, Miss Gonzalez, may I present my son? Andrew, Miss Isabel Gonzalez. How do you do, Mr. Hardy? How do you do? Gosh, I've heard so much about you, I feel I know you already. And if actually meeting you is going to be any more exciting than thinking about it for two whole years, I know I'll just blow up. You're very kind. It's a nice day, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, uh, there's the organ starting. Nice to have met you, senorita. Uh, we'll uh, see him again this evening at the country club. You folks are coming, aren't you? Of course, of course, of course. Please be there. Mr. Benedict has put me in the show, and Polly tells me you're a great judge of singing. Come along, dear. Well, they're uh, a pretty girl, don't you think so, Andrew? Girl? What girl? Oh, oh, uh, pretty? Uh, funny thing, I didn't even notice. You did. Now I've heard everything. My mess sergeant could see that. He'd cut his throat. <laughs> Andrew! Hmm? Are you all right? Well, I never felt better in my... Oh, excuse me, Dad. Go ahead and say grace. Well, Andrew, I'm a broad-minded man, but I can't ask God to bless our dinner when... you're not wearing your pants. Oh, oh, my pants. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, excuse me. I wasn't even thinking about pants. Now, what could he have on his mind that's that serious? Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's no laughing matter. James, do you suppose the arm has changed, Andrew? I'll say that Andrew's changed. But those two years are vital ones in the life of a boy. Because those are the years, whether he's at home or in the army, when he changes from a boy to a grown man. But, James, that awful pretty girl in church, do you know, he looked at her as if she weren't there? It proves he is older. Well, he's not that old, Millie. <laughs> Andrew, if you eat any more, you'll blow up and bust. I'll fill up my plate, Dad, and stand back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to fill up on home-cooked food because in the next two weeks I'm going back to Wainwright, get my degree, and then I'm going on to law school. Good, Thanks. Andrew, good. 
Well, suppose we start your allowance then, as of now. Uh, I'm going to say something that'll come as a shock to practically everybody here, including me. But I'm not going to cost this family a single penny for the next two years. James, this is not our son, Andrew. I'm not crazy, folks. On account of having been in the Army, I get my tuition plus $75 a month for the next two years. It's the millennium. <laughs> Imagine having a son that isn't going to cost the family a penny. <laughs> of course, that doesn't mean if you see something in a store that would make me a nice present, you should be ashamed to send it to me. I don't want my money to go to your head. Well, there won't be any presents, Andrew. I'm going to do better than that. I'm going to put your allowance aside as a nest egg for your first years as a young lawyer. Gosh, that's a swell idea, Dad. Thanks. And, oh, here's a few hundred dollars you can put in the fund to help it along. And, Dad, don't give me any of that money back if I come crawling to you on my stomach. Well, with a fortune involved, maybe I'd better draw up a legal agreement in writing. As far as I'm concerned, Judge Hardy, your word is good enough for me. <laughs> enough of these commercial matters. How about some dessert, Mom? Well, we can get some ice cream at the country club. Come on, we're late. Excuse me. Give me Western Union, please. Hello, Western Union. This is Andrew Hardy. Look, I'm expecting a telegram, only I'm not going to be home. Could you possibly... All right, Andrew, if you'll get the car, we'll be off to the country club. Yes, sir. Good evening, good evening. Hey, hey. You'd better hurry on in. Isabel's going to sing right away. Hello. Hello, Western Union. This is Andrew Hardy speaking. Say, if a telegram comes for me, would you... You just sent it to the house. But there's nobody there. Well, maybe if I leave now, I can get there before the messenger does. Thanks, goodbye. Andrew! Well, what are you bound for? Uh, excuse me, Dad. I guess I've been away so long. I, I thought the dance floor was this way. Andrew, your mother's waited two years for this night. Hiya, Hardy. Hi. Andrew, that's Tommy Gilchrist. Oh, he's merely a casual acquaintance, Mother. Oh, excuse me. He's one of my oldest friends. Oh, good evening, Mr. Gilchrist. Well, hello, Mr. Gilchrist. Hey, when did you get back? And where's that four dollars you borrowed from me the day you were drafted? <laughs> uh, never mind that now. I'll give it back to you with a legal interest. First of all, right now you got to do something for me that will probably confuse you, but I understand perfectly. Go back in the phone booth there and call the clerk on the desk here and tell him that you're somebody next door to Judge Hardy's and you can hear the water running. And tell him to tell the judge you better send Andy home before there's some damage done. You got it? Sure. For four dollars plus interest. Sure, sure. Now, will you go ahead? It's a case of life or death. <laughs> Give me the nickel. Oh, it's nice to have seen you. Wonderful to have seen you. <laughs> Mother? Everything was all right at the house when you left, wasn't it? Well, of course, Andrew. Why shouldn't it be? I just thought maybe somebody had forgotten to do something. Oh, Mr. Benedict, if you're going that way, will you tell Judge Hardy there's water running at his house? He'd better send Andrew home to stop it. Well, we mustn't bother Andrew tonight. Uh... Call the police station. They'll have the patrolman on the beat turn it off. Very good, sir. Moin, a bailar, 
Al estilo de Chihuahua la poquita bonita que alegre el corazón y en su compás Olvidar los pesares de mi alma estrechando entre mis brazos a la dueña de mi amor Ella es la más linda flor que Chihuahua dio para mí Jesucita, tal dulce amor con que soy feliz All of this means when you're talking in the English language There is a place that you find down beneath the border Where people dance and where you'll find kisses made to order Have yourself a polka that engage you our time Ay, que lindo es bailar feliz la poquita Meaning it is grand to dance a polka La flor que Chihuahua dio para mí Jesucita es el dulce amor con que soy feliz Ay, qué lindo es bailar feliz la poquita Meaning it is grand to dance a polka hand in hand Suenan todos los violines y también las guitarras nos marcan el compás para Hola, pues me, when you're talking in the English language, find yourself a polka and go down. Mom, could I ask you something and you not tell anybody about it? Why, well, of course, Andrew. Well, when you were young, Mom, you knew an awful lot of pretty girls and popular ones and intelligent ones, too. Well, your father used to think I was that kind of girl. Oh, of course, Mom. <laughs> you know, somehow a fellow never gets around to realizing that his mother was once the belle in the ball. He always thinks of her as something more wonderful, like she is now. That's very lovely, Andrew. Well, uh, Mom, would that kind of a girl, would, could she settle down in a uh, small town? I was happy to do that very thing with your father. Well, I, I mean, uh, modern girls, girls today, would they in a small town? The right kind of girl hasn't changed in any generation, Andrew, and never will. <laughs> Were you uh, thinking of anyone in particular? I, I was mostly just asking. <laughs> of course, Andrew. Uh, do you mind if I cut in on my wine? Oh, certainly not, Dad. He's all yours, young lady. Oh, uh, of course. Now, have a good time, Andrew. Yes, Mom. James, you danced just as beautifully as you did when you were twins. <laughs> I know why Polly Benedict says you haven't lived till you've danced with Andy Hardy. Miss Benedict is very kind. Polly also told me you have the smoothest mind of any boy in Carville. Unfortunately, conversation is rapidly becoming a lost art. Uh, 
cut in? Oh, oh, why, certainly. <laughs> well, you're the only man in the world I'd have given her up to. Goodbye now. Thank you. Where are you heading for, Andrew? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Benedict. I'm glad I ran into you, because if you don't give Mom and Dad a lift home, they're going to be in trouble because I'm going to take the car, which was what I was going to ask you to tell Dad. Oh, but Andrew, Thanks I... Thanks a lot for your help in this emergency, sir. Program for Andy Hardy? That's what it says here, mister. Sign here. light through yonder window breaks. Tis the east and Juliet is the sun. Tis my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. But I am too bold. It is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. Hardy speaking. Hello, dear. Listen, this is the police station calling. I tried to get you before to tell you we got your phone call about the water. We couldn't get in the house, so we turned it off at the outside meter. The outside meter? All right. Thank you very much. Fine business. Double bolt the door and leave the window unlocked. Thank you. 
Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. must be around somewhere. There's a light in the house. Well, he was dancing with me when all of a sudden he disappeared. He told me it was an emergency. He seemed very excited. Good evening, young lady. Anything wrong? Everything is fine, officer. Hey, wait a minute. You see, Emily, you did turn the stove off. Where can Andrew be? Oh, I just feel it in my bones that something's wrong. Burglars! Emily, Emily, burglars, don't knock. <laughs> Judge, this young lady says that she's your son. Uh, uh, yes, yes, she is. Everything's all right. Thank you, officer. Good night, Judge. Good night. Good night. Well, Andrew. I'm a, an innocent victim of circumstances. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the picture of innocence, I wonder what he'd look like if you were guilty. Well, come along, Isabel. We may as well go home. <laughs> and I'll see you to the door. Uh, good, good, night. Night. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, <laughs> yeah, Emily, any of that turkey left? Yes, sir. I'll fix your sandwich. Good, good. Uh, Emily, what, uh, what's the matter with your son tonight? Andrew's they here getting married. No. Didn't he ask me tonight if a girl would mind settling down in a small town? Do you know what I saw him looking at in the store window this morning? Uh, wedding ring? Far beyond that. A baby's bathtub. Andrew's thinking of getting married and having a baby. He's only a baby himself. I just know that girl, wherever she is, isn't good enough for him. Oh, James, speak to him. Warn him about all the designing women in this world. Very well. Very well, Emily. It's uh, very complimentary to learn that you think I'm an expert on the subject. Hi, Dad. Hello, Andrew. I'm sorry if I caused you any embarrassment. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. I thought maybe we might have a little talk. Sort of man to man. Man to man? In this? <laughs> you can forget about that. Considering some of the things you've done in the past, wearing your Aunt Millie's kimono seems insane and conservative. Mm -hmm. Before I was married, I didn't even own a bathrobe. Before you were married? Uh, Dad, before you were married, uh, you went out and had lots of fun. I mean, you went out to parties and with girls and things like that, didn't you? Andrew, you want to remember that I wasn't born a gray-haired judge with a law book in my hand. <laughs> but after you get married, do you miss not having fun anymore? Well, certainly not. You don't miss it because you still have it. Only enjoy things more because you're doing them with the girl you love. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, of course. Uh, now that you've discovered there are no peculiar disadvantages, are you thinking about getting married? Oh, gee. Dad, you met Mom when you were a freshman, didn't you? Mm, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And look how swell your marriage turned out. 
That uh, telegram you received, hmm? that was from a Wainwright girl, wasn't it? Yeah. Kay Wilson. Dad, I... I think you're entitled to know that I'm, uh, I'm planning on asking Kay to marry me. Mm-hmm. So... This is the real thing, is it? Well, Kay hasn't said anything to me, and I haven't spoken to her, but while I was away, we wrote to each other, and I thought about her an awful lot. Oh, I had dates with other girls, but not a one of them made me forget Kay. Yeah. I suppose that's a pretty solid test. I would like to uh, go back to college on the Wednesday train, Dad. So soon? Oh. I'm beginning to understand the enthusiasm for a Wainwright education. Well, everything I said about college I meant. I'd have meant it if I hadn't met Kay. I, I really do want to go back to school. The fact that Kay is there is not slowing me down any, though. You've thought it all out, and this is the way you want it, then? Yes. That's if it's all right with you and Mom. Well, I... I think you'd better let me talk to your mother first. Yes, sir. Good night, Andrew. back to college on Wednesday. Wednesday? Hmm. Wednesday. He's leaving home two weeks before he has to. He'd rather be with that girl than with his own flesh and blood. Uh, no, just possible this girl isn't even interested in Andrew. Why, what's the matter with Andrew? Well, nothing serious. But that doesn't mean that every girl in the world wants Andrew for her husband. James, you're on her side. Oh. We haven't even met the girl, and you're on her side. Emily, that's... I'm going to Wainwright to see this girl. When Andrew leaves, I'm going to be on the train with him. Well, I think we should both see her, but not like that. We don't want to come down on him like a protecting army. Emily, for ten years, we've talked about going back to Wainwright for alumni homecoming week. I think this is the year to do it. Oh, I knew you'd think of something. When is homecoming? Or just a few weeks. Then we'll be there in time to save him. Unless that vampire decides to marry him right away. Oh, whatever. Take my things out to the men's dorm, will you, please? I'll pay you right well, now. Well, you figure on hoping it is a long way to the campus. I've been away so long, I'm going to love every inch of it. be irresistible in that coat. Kay! Kay, darling! <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Welcome back to Wainwright. Why, you look better than I ever thought you'd look, and I, I thought you'd look sensational. Well, you haven't run down here yourself. What are you doing for the whole rest of the year? I figure if we have about five or six dates a week in about three years, we'll be back on schedule. <laughs> hey, give me a chance to catch my breath. <sighs> Oh, and, and beside all of that, this here, it's this dance, it's not exactly a date. It's compulsory. I'm still a freshman, and you wouldn't want me to get in trouble by not going, would you? Of course I'm going with you. You know, Kay, a man could look for the rest of his life for a girl like you. And at the dance, it'll give me a chance to say something. Well, I have something very special to ask you. The dance will give us a chance to have a long, serious talk about us. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, I can't wait. And in the meantime, we'll always have luncheon together at our same old table. And to think there are some people that don't believe in college. Kay, Kay Wilson, 
Here comes your private messenger. Hello, Duke. Oh, Andrew, you remember Duke Johnson? I ought to. He was the first sophomore I had trouble with when I came to Wainwright. <laughs> My childhood is behind me, Hardy. I am a sober citizen. Oh, and president of the student council, I might add. Gosh, that's swell. You too can be the life of the party. I was uh, over waiting for an answer to some telegrams. It's a uh, new semester, and I'm already three months overdrawn on my allowance. <laughs> this came for you while I was there. I saw you through the window, so. Thank you. Something wrong? No, not really. It's from my guardian. Excuse me. I've got to get back to the dorm. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll go with you. If you don't mind, I'd rather you didn't. I've got some thinking to do. Nice girl. Uh, to put it mildly, she's triple terrific. Hardy, I want to talk to you and I'll make it short. Oh. How about giving the student council a hand? Well, Duke, you know, I've been away for such a long now, time that's now. That's just exactly why I'm asking you. The two years that you've been away must have given you a lot that a kid right out of high school hasn't got. Uh, well, uh, now this stands, for instance. It's for the frosh, and they're not doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. The student council was looking around for a freshman to be chairman of the dance committee, and you're it. Now, all you have to do is see that there aren't any stags. Every frosh male brings a female, if you have to handcuff them together. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. You've made old Duke a very happy man. Oh, uh, by the way, you do have a date yourself, I hope? Duke, all I can say about my date is... Woo-hoo! Well, you did very well this time, Duke. Old Duke Johnson always does very well. Duke, why don't you change that old story? Why? When it still works. Hello there. Hello. You're Duke Johnson, aren't you? Your servant, lady. Uncle Duke, you're a campus big shot. Have you got a minute for a poor little freshman? What's your problem, young lady? And come just a little closer to the microphone. Do you like my hair? Hair? Sure, high class hair. Think my face is pretty? Very nice face, one of the best. And I'm not exactly stupid either. Sister, you're talking to Uncle Duke. Let your hair down. Here's my grief. I'm a frosh named Coffee Smith, and I've been around since college opened, and nobody's asked me for a date yet. Is that all that's bothering you? I'll see somebody takes care of that. Hooray. Find somebody to take me to the frosh get-together? That I will guarantee over my signature. It's not going to be easy. Oh, you're a cinch. Don't take my word for it. Look at yourself in the mirror. You look... Holy smoke. What? You're taller than... That's a trouble, Uncle Duke. I'm taller than anybody. Well, look, honey, why don't you wear flat-heeled shoes? And go around with your landing gear pulled in. You know. No soap, Uncle Duke. Why pretend? I'm an awful big girl, and anybody that likes me has got to like an awful big girl. Look, I said not to worry. You'll get took to that dance and you'll have a good time. Yes, sir, you'll be there. If it takes two guys to do it. It looks very smart on you, sir. Very smart. Huh? Well, looks like you've got yourself a sale. Press it up pretty and pack it. I'll wait. We can have it in a few minutes. Let's see. That will be, uh... 6250 plus the sales tax. Oh, I'm afraid I haven't got that much cash with me now. But, uh, I can pay you on the first of the month. Why don't you come in the first of the month? Maybe we'll still have it. Huh. Excuse me, I'm on a phone. I'd like to place a call to Judge James K. Hardy in Carville, please. This is his son calling. And could you rush it through? I'll wait right here. Hmm? The charges? I want them reversed naturally. Say, uh, you had a check sport jacket in the window. Yes, here it is, sir. Oh, 
Well, it's a little conservative, but uh, I guess it'll do. Well, we have other coats. Awfully high priced here, $62.50. What do I care? I'm loaded. Uh, operator, can you hurry? I'm not calling Honolulu. Doesn't fit you. It's not supposed to. Operator, we'll, we'll try the courthouse or the law library. He's got to be someplace. That's the kind of material that shrinks. It's a little bit too big anyhow. It's the only coat of this type we have in stock. I don't expect to get any more. Well, that's okay with me. I don't like it anyway. Hello, Dad. Remember all of that money I gave you to hold for me and told you not to give it back to me under any circumstances? Yeah, well, wire me 62.50 of it right away, will you? But, 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 Dad, you're a judge. You know the laws. Isn't there some way you can break a non-breakable agreement? All right. All right. Give my love to Mom. Goodbye. That's just the trouble. Everybody worries about my future, but nobody worries about my now. Look, couldn't you keep it out of the window for at least a few days? For a month. Fair enough. I guess it has to be. Say, can I win your contest? I, I mean, can I enter your contest? Oh, you got the contest won already, huh? Well, I've got to spend already at least sixty-two fifty of it. Oh, hi there. Hi. Can I take your books for you? Thank you. How was your ancient Greek this morning? Greek to me. How was political science? <laughs> Greek to me. At least these first few weeks have been. Say, what's new? I haven't seen you since yesterday. <laughs> oh, I got a new dream dress for the dance. Wait till you see it. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hey, Hardy, here's a note from the dean marked important. Huh? Oh, hold these, will you? Hey. These come immediately after class. Oh, I wonder what I've done wrong now. You don't have to remember. The dean will tell you. Her whole, hold these, Kay. I'll see you in jail. I'm Andrew Hardy. I think the dean wanted to see me. Somebody wants to see you. Mom! Dad! Andrew! Andrew. <laughs> oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Are you there? How'd you get here? Oh, for nearly a hundred years. Your father's been promising to bring me here for homecoming week. Which should begin, according to my official invitation, about eight o'clock tonight at the Frosch get-together. The chairman of the dance, Dad, is none other than your son. Chairman? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Andrew, you look at least an inch taller. And, folks, there are only two kind of freshmen here this year. The kind that takes just any girl and the kind that takes Kay Wilson. And that's me. Oh, oh, so we'll meet your young lady this evening, huh? You'll meet her and you'll love her, and you'll wonder how a million dollars worth of girl could waste her time on me. <laughs> <laughs> your rooms are ready for you, Mrs. Hardy. Oh, thank you. Well, Andrew, I suppose you'll be running around like a chicken with his head off till 8 o'clock. Well, Dad, I still have to round up some stubborn Romeos, and I have to see the student council president, Duke Johnson, and then at dinner tonight I have a meeting with my committee. But uh, I can cancel all that. No, oh, no, no, nothing of the kind, nothing of the kind. Mother and I will get organized here. Then we're going to have dinner with Dr. Standish. So we'll see you at the dance. Hello, Hardy. Hi. Say, Hardy. Yeah? If I told you where you could pick up ten bucks without lifting a finger, would you give me half? Why, sure. Well, then, if I told you where you could get forty dollars without a lick of work, you'd still give me half? Absolutely. What is this, a gag? I'm busy. Oh, uh, one more question. That's all. If I tell you where you can get $75 by just asking for it, you'd split it with me, wouldn't you? Sure. Word of honor? Word of honor. 
75 bucks. Oh, boy, my sport coat. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm Andrew Hardy. You want Miss Jeeves back there. Uh, I'm Andrew. Oh. Something I can do for you? Uh, yes, I'm Andrew Hardy. Oh, I'm Hattie Jeeves. How do you do? Uh, I, uh, I think I won your prize, it says here. Oh, of course, of course. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Hardy. And how do you want it? In fives or tens, I don't care. Oh, the prize isn't in cash. The, the prize, I, I don't get $75? Yes, and merchandise. Merchandise. You mean stuff like the... Like, oh. you, you don't happen to have any men's sports jackets around, do you? No, but you can have $75 worth of anything in the shop. You see, we didn't dream that a man would enter this contest, much less win it. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll have to think it over. <laughs> Wait for me. I want to talk to you. Yeah, I'm certainly glad I caught you. I've been trying to phone you all over town. Well, I've been down at the new little lingerie shop. Lingerie? Andrew. Oh, I won their prize oh. in merchandise. And I can't... But I, I thought maybe you could go in and buy something for the dance tonight, like some stockings or something oh. like that. That's awfully sweet of you, Andrew, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going home. This afternoon. Home? For how long, you mean? You mean that you won't be able to go to the dance tonight? No, I won't. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I don't mean to butt into your private affairs, but... Oh, this that's is... quite all right, Andrew. Well, this is a family matter. You told me you didn't have any family. I have a guardian, remember? Oh, goodbye, Andrew. I've got to run. I have a train to catch. Goodbye, Kay. I don't know how I'm going to get along here without you, but you will hurry back, won't you? Yes. It'll only be a day or so, and when I get back, we'll have that long talk. Yeah, and when you get back, remember, I've got something awfully important to tell you. All right. Goodbye, Andrew. like to take a very nice girl to the frosh get together. Uh, couldn't you give me a little one? About eight or nine feet tall? Duke, can I speak to you for a minute? Oh, hello, Mr. Chairman. Say, you must have things pretty well greased up for tonight if you've got time on your hands. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to resign, Duke. My girl went out of town and the chairman can't show up stag can. Oh, don't worry about a thing. How do you like them, smart or pretty? Go ahead, take your pick. I've got just the girl. Uh, well, you see, Duke, I've been going steady with a girl, and I... My friend, I have selected you a partner for this night only who is strictly platonic. In short, you will platonic her, and I can guarantee that she will platonic you. But I... You can't quit in a crisis. We count on you. The college counts on you. My friend, do you know that pretty puss in the white cap afloat there in the briny name of Smith? Uh, no, I... Uh... This is a must. Well, if it's for the good of the college, I'll ask her, because there's always the chance that she'll say no. Are, are you Miss Smith? Uh, I'm Andrew Hardy. Hi, Uncle Andrew. Uh, Duke Johnson said that I, uh, you, uh, you couldn't go to the dance with me, could you? Yes, I could. Uncle Duke guaranteed to get me a date. Uncle Duke's a great man. Eight o'clock girls dorm, and I'll guarantee you won't have to look very hard for me. You know, there's, there's nothing personal in this. Tonight, I'm a girl that thinks not of romance, but dancing. Don't be late, Uncle Andrew, and thanks. 
Yes, ma'am. You were my date. No, I'm sorry. I'm Andrew Hardy. I'm here waiting for Coffee Smith. Oh. Oh, she lives downstairs. She'll probably be up in a minute. Thank you. Coffee Smith? Yes, Hardy, would you mind telling her whom you're waiting for? Not at all. Coffee Smith. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, no, it can't be true. I will right, prove it to you. Who did you say you were waiting for? Coffee Smith. <laughs> Good evening, Uncle Andrew. Coffee Smith arriving. Good evening. And all ready for the rat race. I guess there's no doubt that you're seeing what you're seeing and I'm seeing what I'm seeing. It was a dirty trick. Duke Johnson should never have done it. I don't think he meant any harm. I'd have been bigger than any man he could have picked out. And I'd have been smaller than pretty nearly any girl. It's quite a problem going through life like the Statue of Liberty without her torch. Yeah. Yeah. It was a wonderful dance, and I had a grand time. Thanks, and good night. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Look, let's, let's, let's go to that dance. Go to the dance? You and me? Together? Why, certainly. Uh, it's not how tall you are or how short you are. It's what you got. Wait, wait, Coffee, there's, there's a lot of people in this world that are too tall or too small to do some things. Well, we'll just pull up our suspenders and sash you out and kick them right in the teeth. We'll show them. Let's show him, Uncle Andrew. Gee, you look awful pretty tonight, Shorty. You're looking mighty handsome yourself, big boy. James, the way we've brought Andrew up, I'm sure this girl will be attractive and nice. Well, you know, Emily, love is blind. Gee, Hossafat. How you doing? Scared. No feeling from the knees down. Oh, I wonder what their children will look like. Uh, <clears throat> as chairman of the Frosh get-together, I declare this dance started. And when the music starts, break clean and no hitting in the clinches. He's tall enough to be his father. Come on, let's loosen up. Everybody's watching us. 